Mr. Borrell, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us at Deutsche Welle. I wanted to start with uh, Ukraine. Uh, we've uh, seen that Russia has returned to uh, the initiative to uh, get the grain out of Ukraine through the Black Sea, uh, but the deal itself uh, is about to expire. How uh, positive are you that Russia will be willing to renew this deal and, and keep this agreement going? You never know. But there is no excuse. Russia cannot say that uh, he's not going to go to the deal again because there are obstacles from the European sanctions. The European sanctions are not targeting food and fertilizers exports. We have clarified this deal, we'll continue doing that, but Russia has no excuses and no reasons. You know, every day that the grain from Ukraine is being blocked, you can count it on the number of people suffering from hunger. 20 million tons of grain we are blocking Ukraine. So it's a good news that Russia goes back to the deal. They have never, should never have ended on it. Let's hope that we'll continue opening the door for the Ukrainian grain go to feed the world. We're going towards winter and we see Russia bombing civilian infrastructure in Ukraine, including electricity networks, water networks. It's going to be a difficult winter for Ukraine. Uh, are EU countries, also G7 countries, doing enough at the moment to support Ukraine and keep supporting Ukraine? Enough? What is enough? Russia is destroying a country. The Russian army is unable to conquer it. The Ukrainians are resisting and rejecting the invader, but they are trying to destroy it, and that's what they are doing. You can destroy a country at hundreds of kilometers far away. They are destroying mainly the electricity system. They want to put Ukrainians into the darkness, in the cold during the winter. And they hope also, they wait also for us, European people, to be weakened and in the winter not to be so ready to support the Ukrainians. And we have to be ready to support the Ukrainians. They are bearing the worst part of this story. We have to support them. Millions of Ukrainians right now, they don't have access to electricity. And when the winter will be stronger and the temperature will go in down, they want to push these people out of Ukraine, escaping to Europe. So we have to support them, providing capacity to mend the electricity system, and mainly arms to defend. Anti-aliens, anti-alien weapons, to shut down the drones before the drones explode over their heads, over their houses, over their power stations. This is our moral duty, you know. This is the moral duty of the Europeans. How much do you think European countries are ready and willing to take possibly new and more Ukrainian refugees who might leave the country now that the conditions there in winter become increasingly difficult? I cannot put the figure. Now we are hosting about 4 million Ukrainian refugees. 10 million escaped. Many of them came back to Ukraine. And certainly you can imagine, you don't have heating, you don't have light, you don't have electricity, you don't have water. What would you do? You would live. And that's what Russia is doing. The same thing that Putin is doing, trying to block, to block the grain from Ukraine. Less grain in Africa means more migration. They are trying to create political instability, and they are trying to create migration waves, because they know that the Europeans are very sensitive to migration. So we have to continue supporting Ukraine, and we have to make the deal working, grain out, electricity in. That's what we have to do. Now, on China, you've said recently that um, European countries should make an effort to uh, see China as a competitor more than as a partner and to move away from economic dependency from China. But now German Chancellor Scholz is on his way to China right now with a full delegation of business leaders. How do you see this trip from Scholz? Is it going in the wrong direction? 
And look, China is a, it's a partner, no doubt about it. It's also a competitor, an economic competitor, and is a political rival because their political system is a completely different one from us. We are democracy, multi-party competition, and they are a single party. They work in a different way. So we are rival, we are competitors, and we are partners. But Germany is very much important, the export to China, the investment in China. And we are not uh, looking for decoupling the economy of China with our economies because it would be, um, everybody will be losing. So I understand perfectly that Germany and all European countries in different degrees have an economic interest in continue partnering with, with, with China. It doesn't mean that we are not vigilant, that we are worried about a lot of things, but I understand perfectly that Europe is not uh, trying to decouple economically with China. Is there a risk that European countries will make the same mistake that they made with Russia, with China? Well, we are not, <laughs> we don't import 40% uh, of our gas from China. Certainly, our energy dependency on Russia was uh, too much, but it's no longer too much. Before the war, our gas dependency from Russia was 40% of our imports, 40%, almost half of our imports. Now it's about 7%. In uh, a few months, we have been able to reduce our energy dependency from Russia from 40% to 7%. It's a lot, incredible. And we will be reducing it until vanishing completely our dependency. It was too high, now we are correcting this dependency. Uh, one last question on Iran. Are we going to see a new package of sanctions coming against Iran in, in the next few weeks? We have just approved one. We have just approved one and yesterday I had a conversation with uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Iran and I insisted that Europe is united before uh, in front of the what's happening there. And we, I told him that we are very much worried by the crackdown of the demonstrators, by the situation, especially of the women, and that uh, the European Union stand united behind the sanctions that we have been taken, which doesn't prevent us of trying to continue discussing about the nuclear deal with Iran, because it's the only way that uh, we can be sure that Iran doesn't, doesn't become a nuclear power. Mr. Borrell, thank you very much. Thank you.